video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a bootable USB device out of using an ISO file that you may have downloaded from the internet. Now the example that I'll be using is I've went to the UbuntuMate.org download website and I've downloaded Ubuntu Mate 18.04.1, the desktop for the AMD 64-bit uh, system. I have a 64-bit machine so that's the one that I selected and I downloaded this and I didn't use the torrent file now for the sake of this video since it's 1.9 gigabyte I'm not gonna let you watch the entire process of me downloading it so I have previously downloaded this and put it in this folder and as you can see it's a very large file now the program that I'll be using is Etcher uh, it used to be just called just Etcher but now it's called the Bellina Etcher so it works it's the same way it's just now has a, a new name Bellina Etcher as you can see the, by the little animated image that you see here, it goes through the three-step three process. You select your image that you've downloaded, then you select your correct drive, and if you don't select the correct drive, it may wipe out everything uh, on a drive, so you be sure that you do select the correct drive, and also make sure that if you've got anything on the drive that you want to keep, you copy it to a hard drive or to a safe location, because it will wipe everything off the disk. And then the last thing, it will flash. Now, I'm using a USB. If you're using a device that doesn't have a USB that may have a little SD card, you could put it on an SD card as well. So you can put an operating system on an SD card or USB device by using Etcher. Now, I download, I've already previously downloaded this for Windows 64-bit. I'm on a Windows 10 system. And here's the icon that it created on my desktop. It's called the Bellina Etcher. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click that icon and let it start scanning my system. It'll take a little while to load and once that you click on it, it, it will load and it'll have those three little uh, options that you saw on the web page. Now as you can see here, I've already selected the, the ISO file uh, here by selecting it. I didn't really have to select it, but you got to select it here. You click here and I've already did this once by practice so if I click here there's the ISO file that I downloaded I hit open now this is the important step well that's important too if you get the wrong ISO file you're not going to have on your USB or SD card the correct operating system but now to make sure you don't wipe off uh, an external hard drive or another USB device you select the drive and make sure because as you see here I have two external two terabyte hard drives connected to this system where I copy files and move it from one machine to another. But here's the, the disk that I want to use. It's a USB 2, it's a flash disk USB device. It's 4.13 gigabyte. I select that device and I hit continue. Now, once I start to flash the device, it will come up uh, and it, it will go through a little step and then it will start flashing it. It will start copying it. And then immediately when it finishes, it will start validating it very similar to where if you've ever written to a CD or a DVD and you have it to verify when the writing process is completed. So let me go ahead and click the flash button. Now as you can see here it shows you the name of the ISO file that you selected or a partial name. It shows you the device which is a USB 2 device and it's starting the process. So as you can see here it's 3% completed of the, fr of the flashing now since this is on a Windows, as you can see here, it's not going to display random commercials, but it does have an ad that you can look at while it's flashing your device. Now once it goes through the flashing process, then it will restart the process over, but this time it will validate the content that it wrote from uh, burning, or not really burning, but putting the files from the ISO file on your USB to make it bootable. Now I'm going to pause the video and when it gets close to the, the finish of the flashing then I'll come back and then I'll pause again for the validation part then I'll return when it's finished. So I'm going to pause now and I'll be back shortly. Okay now the, the first part of the flashing pro process is almost completed, 98% uh, completed flashing and when it completes this process it will then start the validation where it will make sure that the files that are in the ISO files is actually on your USB and cre uh, created as a creating your USB as a bootable USB device. 
So now it's finishing the, the flashing part, and then it will start the validating part. So in just a moment when it starts the validating part, it won't take as long to validate as it do, did to flash, but it does take some time. So I'm going to pause the video one more time until it finishes or gets near the end of the validating uh, process. So see you in a bit. Okay, now it's finishing the, val uh, the validation process. And as you can see, it says flash complete one successful device. Then it's asking, do you want to flash another? And I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and close the Etcher dialog box. And it still has Etcher up here in the upper left corner like it used to, instead of saying the Bellina Etcher. So let me go ahead and close the dialog box. I'm going to open my uh, Explorer, File Explorer. And as you can see here, uh, when I go to the PC, it's not shown now in the devices here, but it is in the USB device. So if I were to reboot my system, it would then identify the USB as having a bootable device and it will boot up into Ubuntu Mate 18.04.1 if I go into my CMOS and set it to boot from the USB device. So that is just a quick run through on how you use the Bellina Etcher tool to make a bootable USB device or you can make a bootable SD card. So hopefully this has helped you and have a great day.